Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. This is your host, Jackson Mummy. Glad to have you with us. Uh, you might be listening to this podcast today, uh, but uh, if you'd like to watch the video, you can do that too. This is episode 146, so if you go to celebrationbarreview.com slash 146, 146, you can find the entire video of today's uh, podcast episode, along with some other information. So we hope you'll uh, check that out as well. But however you're uh, coming to us today, we hope things are going well for you and that uh, the world is looking good. Now, I'm recording this before I go on my vacation, but when this episode actually is released, I'll be coming back from vacation and probably have my head down working like crazy because California bar results have come out. And we're probably about a week or so until the last big jurisdiction in the country, which is Georgia, will be releasing their results. So there are a few uh, sort of uh, lagging indicators. That's one of them. But uh, California, Georgia, the last two. So in our next episode, I'll be bringing everybody up to date on the results throughout uh, May uh, that have occurred around the country. Some big jurisdictions, New Jersey, California, Georgia, some others uh, releasing results. And we hope that they were good results for you. Now, in today's episode, I want to share with you an interview I did recently, right after the February 2017 exam results started to be released in April. I had the opportunity to talk with one of our students who took and passed the Tennessee bar exam. Her name is Trish Moore. And I got to tell you, folks, this is an incredible story. Uh, Trish took and passed the exam on her fifth try. And if that isn't enough, where do you hear the things she had to go through and the challenges and all of the setbacks and difficulties that she faced? It was absolutely uh, amazing. And I, I have great respect for Trish and what she did. Now, Tennessee is not a state where we actually provide state-specific materials, but we've had a really good string of success in that state, helping students with multi-state and with their MPTs. Uh, in an earlier episode, we talked to Bill Hyde, who had passed the Tennessee bar with us, and I think Trish might have even heard that interview, came to us, and then she passed in February 2017. I think you're going to love this interview. It's filled with insight and inspiration, certainly, and uh, definitely enough to get your, uh, your blood going and get you moving and motivated. But we've got another way to help get you moving and motivated, and that's our free live webinar, How to Make the Next Bar Exam Your Last Bar Exam. This is the better way, the new way to study uh, and pass your exam. And we're going to be offering that to you live uh, on Thursday. So if you're listening on the day we release tomorrow, Thursday, May 18th at 3 p.m. Eastern, that would be 12 noon Pacific. So again, Thursday, May 18th, 3 p.m., our free 90-minute master class called How to Make the Next Bar Exam Your Last Bar Exam. Now, you do have to register for this uh, uh, webinar, and I expect it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty crowded. So you can register in one of two ways. Uh, if you go to our website at celebrationbarreview.com, you'll see a button on the front page there. Just click, and you can get registered that way. You can also register if you're watching this as a video on this page that uh, the video is located on. So either of those two ways. Actually, there's a third way. You can text the phrase next bar exam to the number 33444. I forgot about that one. You can text uh, next bar exam, all one word, to 33444 and we'll get you registered any of those three ways. Now, if Thursday at 3 o'clock doesn't work for you, um, you can also schedule an on-demand viewing of the same information. All you have to do is go to our uh, web page, uh, scroll down just a little bit, you'll see the on-demand version. If you're on the video page already to watch this podcast, you'll see the option of uh, the live version or the on-demand. So you can just take your choice right there. So we've made it as easy as possible because we think this information is so important and we want to be able to share that with you. Well, I, uh, I want to jump into today's interview. Uh, spoiler alert, bring some Kleenex. Uh, it's a great story and uh, so proud of Trish and what she's accomplished. I hope you'll enjoy uh, hearing and watching this story as much as I enjoyed talking to her. Let's jump into our interview. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Students. We have a treat for you today. Uh, I have with me Trish Moore, who has just passed the Tennessee Bar Exam. And I am telling you, folks, you are going to love, love, love this woman and this story. This is a story I have been dying to tell uh, from the first time that I heard from Trish. And uh, I'm so glad she gets to tell the story and I get to come along for the ride. So hi, Trish. Welcome. We're glad to have you with us today. Thank you. Hi, Jackson. Um, 
so this is an exciting time for you, no doubt, right? Very exciting. Yeah. You took the Tennessee bar in February of 2017. Correct. Which, how many times did you take the exam? In February, that was my fifth attempt. Okay. Now, you have an extraordinary backstory to how you even got to being in law school. And I'd like you to share that, if you're willing, uh, with our audience, because uh, there are people that think, well, I can't do it. It's too much, whatever. <laughs> and I think you're living proof that's probably not true. Can, can you share a little bit about, uh, you know, sort of, sort of the backstory in high school and what you had to go through to get to this point? Absolutely. Well, I'm definitely living proof that anyone can can do this. Um, when I decided that I wanted to be an attorney, all I had was my GED. I had dropped out of high school in the ninth grade and um, was always very good in school, loved school, but um, life just happens and you make bad decisions. So I quit school. I got my GED and then kind of flip flop back and forth for a while. Um, went to community college and didn't really have a direction. Then I started working in probation and I loved it. And I thought, well, wow, this is really, I've kind of found my calling. And that was uh, back in the late nineties. And then I began working for an attorney in 2001. And that really confirmed this is, this is really where I want to be, what I want to do. So um, I signed up for community college to get my associate's degree in 2002. And I worked toward that and I began law school in uh, August of 2005 and graduated in 2009. Okay, now when you started law school, you had children. I did, too. Right. And how old were they when you started law school? Oh, my goodness. Well, my youngest child started kindergarten the same week that I started law school. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, folks. So there's no pressure there. You know, bye, no kid. Pressure. Go to kindergarten. I'm off to contracts, you know, first year. Um, and I did work 40 hours a week, too. So, so. you're working. You're a mom. You've got two kids. And correct. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, one of your children uh, is uh, has Asperger's. Is that right? He does. Okay. My youngest. Okay. So that's a challenge all in itself. And, yes. and so there's a lot going on in your life. So what was law school like for you with all of those balls juggling in the air? Oh, goodness. It was like a second job or a third, second and third job. It was difficult. It was uh, a lot of stress. Um, there were many times I think, oh, I can't make it through this. I'm not going to make it this year. But I uh, persevered and it's just a matter of not giving up, just setting your mind and being determined and not giving up. Okay. Um, and where'd you go to law school? I went to Nashville School of Law in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. So uh, three-year program or four-year program? Four-year. Four-year. So four years <laughs> of law school, which is just like yeah. extending the torture for another year. <laughs> Correct. You get out of law school in what year then? Two 2009. 2009. And you sit mm -hmm. for the bar exam? I do. Okay. And how did you prepare for that first bar exam? Do you remember? Uh, like everyone else in law school for the most part with Barbary and PMBR and uh, sitting through lectures that didn't really make sense to me and it was just all very overwhelming. So, um, uh, yeah. And of course, you've got the finals of law school and Barbary and everything right there crammed all in one. It was just a little much. Yeah, I bet. I bet. And so you took the exam and you didn't pass that first try. So what's your, what's your mindset at that point after the first try? After the first try, um, I wasn't too hard on myself because it's like, you know, a lot of people fail the first time around. So I was pretty easy on myself and, and didn't get too down about it. And I'm just like, okay, I'll just do it again the next time. So um, again, with my Barbary books in tow, I break them open and get ready to study for the February. Uh, that would have been the February 2010 exam. Mm -hmm. and, and the results in February 2010? <laughs> well, I passed uh, all but one of the essay questions and failed it by just three points on the MBE. Wow, that hurts. Doesn't and it? It, it, that that hurt. Yeah, um, and I think sometimes people lose sight of the fact that that in some ways it's easier to fail by a lot than just by a little because it's <laughs> like, oh my gosh, if I had just done this or just done that. But right. It's still, it's still you don't pass, and in Tennessee you have to pass the whole exam at once. You can't bank a, a score like you can in some states. So, okay, you've taken the exam twice. Now what? What happens next? Um, that one was a little bit difficult, especially knowing uh, the MBE has always been kind of my Achilles heel. When I took it the first time, Tennessee was under a um, scaled scoring mechanism where 
depending on what you made on the MBE, determined how many essay questions you needed to get right. So had I done better on the MBE the first time, I would have passed because I was only off by one essay question. So um, this, the third time, I was still determined, and I took it July of 2010. So um, that was three times in a row. Mm -hmm. um, again, studying with Barbary, PMBR, um, a little bit more deterred. But at that point, my, my confidence had been hit pretty significantly by the third try. So um, honestly, I felt like I walked in there already anticipating to fail on the third exam. Yeah, and that would be pretty common. And were you working full time as well at this point? Yes. Okay, so you've still got two kids working full time, now you're studying for the bar for the third time. Yes. And the results come back from the third time and you failed again, right? By one essay question again because my MBE score was too low. Okay, so MBE is clearly becoming like the big, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know, uh, the. Uh, Moby Dick of your life. Right? Correct. <laughs> okay. All right. So now you're you've done it three times. What happens next? I, I took a little bit of a break, uh, only because I had to. The, the 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 state of Tennessee makes you take a one year if you fail it three times. You have to wait a year. So uh, I still wasn't um, going to be knocked off course. So I took that year. I studied. I actually ended up quitting my job before the um, 2011 exam, and uh, I think I did adapt a bar for that one. Yes, I did adapt a bar for that one, along with still using my Barbary books and everything, because you know they teach you that you can't you can't survive the bar without the Barbary books. So, um, and that one I, I don't know what I failed by, but uh, that one that one was the kicker for me. That one was the one that just absolutely wounded me. <laughs> and why so? Because I had taken off work, and I, I really felt better prepared going in, mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I think it was the mental part on the fourth try that was more the problem, um, because I did feel more prepared, yeah. but yeah, it, it really, that one wounded me. <laughs> and, and, uh, and one of the things that I really appreciate when somebody comes on and does these is that it's being transparent. We're talking about some things that aren't so wonderful, but I know that at that point in your personal life, things weren't going very well either. Is that right? Mm, that's correct. Yeah. Um, after the fourth attempt, and the economy had downturned, so I had ended up um, getting my job kind of back, but then got laid off within a year later. Um, and then within all of that time, uh, my husband of 20 years uh, wanted a divorce. So just a lot of things going on, and um, that kind of kept me away from the bar for a long period of time. Yeah. So, when we, let me just, when we first met, you said to me, you couldn't even talk about bar review without crying. I, I could is not. That, is that, am I accurate about that? that You're very just, accurate. Okay. For probably well over a year, close to two years, after the fourth uh, failure, if you even said the word bar exam around me, I lost it because it was just so devastating for me to, to fail that time because for the first time I walked out there thinking, oh, I actually did it this time, maybe, perhaps, I hope. And um, taking time off work and just really giving it everything to, 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 to not pass, and then you walk away from there going, I'm just never gonna, I'm never gonna finish this thing, I'm never gonna pass this exam. And, and I, again, I just want to put this all in perspective for folks. You've got two children who are now, what, uh, five years old and nine years old? Am I getting that right? Um, I, at my fourth attempt, that yeah. would have been in 2011, I would have had an 11-year-old and, yes, uh, a 19-year-old. Oh, okay. So my math told me that. All right. So an 11-year-old <laughs> and a 19-year-old, mm -hmm. one of whom's got Asperger's, and you're a single mom now, right? And you've just gotten laid off from your job. Correct. Can it get any worse? Well, it actually does. <laughs> um, at that point, um, I had moved back to my hometown because I had moved to the Nashville area just for school. Uh, so I had moved back to my hometown. Um, my husband and I actually ended up reconciling for, for a little while, um, I guess long enough to get comfortable again, and um, I had decided to sit for the bar exam again. I thought, okay, I've put it off long enough. I'm not done with it yet. I just never felt finished with it and um, decided to start studying again. 
And he left again. But we did file a divorce in uh, January, about a year and a half ago. So, um, and um, and you don't know this yet, Jackson. I actually, while I was out studying for the bar, um, I was still working. I had taken, they'd given me 10 vacation days. And I lost my job while um, I was out studying for the bar, which I found out the night before the exam. The night before but that's the okay. exam. Oh, my gosh. Correct. Yes. So um, I felt like I've had everything thrown at me through this process. Yeah, I, I know that you're a person of faith. And, yes. and I, I know that when so many bad things happen, it is really easy to say, why me? You know, why God? Why me? Uh, but I also know that at some point you start to say, you know what? This this can't possibly be from God. This has got to be the enemy attacking, right? I mean, and throwing I everything at you that possibly could be happening. My pastor and I had a lot of... A lot of long conversations. I bet. I bet. So now, how did you find Celebration Bar Review? Honestly, at the at the time, I'm just uh, Googling, trying to find, okay, what's something that I can afford? Uh, because I can't afford Barbary at this point. And it had been six years since the last exam. I knew a lot had changed, and I, I needed to update myself. Um, but I did. I, I knew that I couldn't do Barbary financially or just mentally. Barbary was always very overwhelming for me. Um, it, it was too much just forced at you um, that you're taught to remember and try to regurgitate, and I just that did not work for me. Um, so, literally, just uh, doing a Google search and coming across you, and then I found your videos on YouTube from that, and uh, really liked the. The whole approach that you took to bar prep. It's not just about memorization and being able to spit that back out and put it on paper. It's it's um, the mental aspect too. You have to believe in yourself and I had forgotten that so I needed that reminder. So you, so you joined our course. Yes. So you followed the course and the way that we had structured it. Uh, there was uh, assignments, there was reading, and you did regular reading, and then you went through the lectures and you did the question practice. Um, and then you got sort of knocked off uh, your perch a little bit because there was, uh, I think there was some sort of technical error with your application, wasn't there? Correct. I had signed up for the July um, 2016 bar exam and thought that I was good to go, was ready to roll, and then I get an email about six o'clock one evening saying, we're sorry, but you're unable to sit for the July bar. This was just weeks, you know, I had been studying four months, so this was just a few weeks before the bar exam. Uh, but Tennessee requires three letters of reference for the bar, and apparently uh, one of my three letters didn't upload onto their system correctly, so I didn't get to sit for the exam. Okay. But it worked out, it was a blessing in disguise, actually, so. So now you're sitting for the February 2017 exam. What is it like emotionally for you to be studying for this exam coming into February? Oh, goodness. Um, exhausting. <laughs> Mentally exhausting. Um, still dealing with those questions of, can I handle another failure again? That was really my thing is, you know, can you handle another failure? And um, it, that was the hardest part is preparing myself for that. But using your approach and, and watching these videos actually of other successful um, bar students, and I don't remember the gentleman's name, but there was another gentleman from Nashville who had taken it for the fourth time. Yeah, well, and his. Yeah. Bill, Bill yes. Hyatt. Yeah, Bill Hyde. Yes, Bill. Um, that was just very inspiring to me. And I, I watched that. I'm like, well, you know, if, if they can do it after all this time, I can do it too. So that did help a lot. Yeah, and I know you're not like dying to get on camera. So I, you no. know, I, just, I just want to say that. that that this is very much appreciated because I know there are people right now who are sitting there going, oh, I can't believe this story so far. So you dig back in, your, uh, your job has just gotten taken away, you're still taking care of the kids, you're going through the divorce process, and you're studying for the fifth time for the bar. So if we're trying to get a recipe for success, this probably <laughs> doesn't look like that recipe, would you say? Probably not, okay. <laughs> no. So what are you doing to overcome all of those things that are, you know, clearly pushing down on you and, and pushing back against your being successful? Lots and lots of prayer. And, and uh, my church family is, is wonderful. So leaning on them a lot uh, did help. And um, I, I, it was actually fascinating. About a year and a half ago, um, in part of my personal career, I worked in 
the uh, realm of uh, addiction recovery. And so I was at a lot of functions related to that. Mm -hmm. And I had a lady approach me who I did not know um, and said, hey, I, I think I can help you pass the bar exam. And I'm like, how do you even know about the bar exam? Who are you? She ended up being a counselor. And so she uh, started working with me, helping with uh, test anxiety, which did help some. So that helped a lot, having having that structure, having that support network mm -hmm. to uh, with, with just everything that I was dealing with um, at the time. Right, right. So it's time for the bar exam. You go to take the test. What's your feeling as you're going into the exam this time? Petrified. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely petrified. Um, Tennessee had added uh, the MPT mm -hmm. as a third element, which I was not familiar with. Um, didn't know anything really about. Um, so that concerned me. They had switched up the format of the test. Uh, so everything was different than the last time that I had taken it. So just that uh, it was like taking it for the first time almost all over again because it had just changed so much. And when the exam was done, the two days of testing, what did it feel like to you? What did you think had happened? I wasn't for sure. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't. Yeah. Um, I definitely felt better prepared. Um, by, by the end of my studies, I was scoring consistently high scores on the MBE practice questions. Um, so I felt confident going in because no matter what format of question I took, whether it was the questions that you had or I had even purchased questions directly from the National Conference of Bar Examiners, um, one, one set, and um, did that 100 question set, and I'm still scoring consistently the same. Mm -hmm. So um, I did have that confidence going in that I didn't have that before because I'd never scored that high on the MBE questions prior to the bar exam. So. Right, right. So during the waiting period before results come out, uh, what are you doing? I mean, what's going on in your life at that point? Uh, scrambling, trying to find a job initially, because like I said, I found out uh, the night before that I didn't have a job to return to. Right. Um, uh, but I began working with a, a local attorney and um, who's somewhat new to the bar himself. He's on his second year in, mm -hmm. and uh, so he's been a great support system too. Okay. So then results are released uh, online. Yes. Tell me about that. Tell me what that was like. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Um, I was actually at work and was meeting with a client, um, the attorney that I worked for, he was in court, he actually knew before I did. <laughs> so he had texted me and after I got finished with my appointment, because I wasn't expecting results until later in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and it just so happened that they came out quite early actually, around 10 a.m. Um, yeah, I kind of lost it. I think I scared everyone else in the office, uh, <laughs> squealing and screaming and uh, it was it was so emotional and it still is. I'm just now getting to where I can sleep at night because before, if I ever woke up at night, I'd be like, I passed the bar and I couldn't go back to sleep. So that's the best feeling ever, isn't it? <laughs> it's the best feeling ever. So now I'm just waiting for, for being sworn in and, and I can't wait. That's great. And what do you plan to do as a, as a member of the bar? What's your interest? Um, my interest is, is primarily family law. Um, but I also, um, would, like to do estate planning, more civil litigation uh, than anything. Mm -hmm. That's great. What did your kids say about all this? They're ecstatic, especially my youngest. He has been my biggest cheerleader. And actually, uh, you've kind of become part of our family. He knows you by first name. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> every time he would walk by, he'd be like, oh, it's Jackson again. Jackson, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Apparently, so, I've put more children to sleep than I realized. And, and their parents. <laughs> Uh, that's great. I, well, you know, what is his name? His name's Christopher. Well, hi, Christopher. Uh, <laughs> your mom <laughs> did good. Your mom did real good. You know, this story for you is it took you, by my math, eight years after you graduated law school to pass the bar. Correct. Uh, it took you, I'm trying to think how many years since you uh, went, when she went back to high school, you know, to get your GED. <laughs> what is that? How many years is that? I mean, it's got to be... Well, I actually got my GED before I was uh, 18, so, okay, uh, but right. so the I first time. You are, but that's, that's, <laughs> a pretty, um, that's pretty amazing. I mean, you went to college, what, in your late 20s, right? Yes. Is that about right? And so, uh, wow. I mean, you know, 14, 15 years, something like that uh, in this I whole started, process? 
Correct. I started my associate's degree um, in January of 2002 yeah. and um, graduated from, I actually got my associate's degree and my bachelor's degree uh, one, one Friday night, one on Saturday morning. Um, so <laughs> I know. Um, so that was in May of 2005. I got accepted to law school and started law school August of 2005. You know, when we talk about a dream deferred, uh, I think this you might be the personification of that. I mean, 15 <laughs> years to, to, from the point of saying, okay, I'm going back into the educational world to getting to this point. What an extraordinary accomplishment. What a amazing uh, story of your perseverance and your dedication and your faith uh, to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. I, I think a lot of people watching today would say, well, I would have given up here and here and here <laughs> and here. And you didn't. You, you kept at it. What, what advice would you have for people? Because I know there will be people watching you today. Trish, you're going to be as famous as, as Bill and other people, I'm sure. <laughs> what would you say to people who are watching who are really struggling? Maybe they've had some disappointment and discouragement around the bar. Right. Well, um, I know for me, there were times that I did quit. Um, after the fourth attempt, um, being so just absolutely wounded from that, fourth time and it's like, you know, I really gave it everything that time. I don't know what more I could have done. Um, there were times that I did quit, but it just never felt finished to me. It's something that I've always wanted for me to complete for, for me to have that, that just finality of, okay, this is the last hurdle. Um, my best advice is just don't give up and have a really good support network. I mean, you can overcome whatever you set your mind to. And I'm, I'm living proof of that. Yeah, you are. And would you recommend our course for the MBE? Absolutely. Absolutely. Just because of the approach that you take. It's not just about um, memorizing. I, I, I learned the material better with your program, uh, studying for the bar, than I did in a lot of my law school classes. So um, Interesting, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it is. Well, uh, we are... Accept our congratulations, please, on behalf of Thank our you. entire staff. We are so excited for you, and this really was a story we really wanted to share because <laughs> it's not our story, it's yours, and it's your accomplishment, and we're so grateful to have been on the journey, the small part of the journey that we were, <laughs> uh, and, and I have no doubt, you know, you're going to be a terrific member of the bar because that same doggedness and pers perseverance that's what I would want in my attorney. I want an attorney that won't give up, that will find a way to <laughs> succeed uh, in spite of the odds and the circumstances. And you're going to be that person. Uh, I have no doubt that you're going to be quite successful in whatever Thank field of law you choose to, to uh, work in. And, uh, you know, lucky will be the clients that, that get to work with you and the, the attorneys that, that get to work alongside you. We're really, really proud of you. And Thank uh, you. so delighted for your success. And I know I'm speaking for my audience, probably some of whom are in tears right now, uh, <laughs> because this story is so spectacular and special. Uh, so congratulations, new member of the Tennessee Bar. Great things are going to happen. I hope you'll check back in with us periodically and let us know how things are going. Um, and uh, anything else you want to share with our audience before we finish up here today? Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm just, uh, I hope that this inspires someone to, to keep going because it would have been very easy to say, you know what, I'm just, I'm done with this. I can't do it anymore. But um, if it's, if it's your goal, if that's your dream, don't stop because it, miracles happen every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, Trish, congratulations. Good Thank luck you. to you. Thanks for sharing your story. And to all of you who've been watching, I uh, hope you'll uh, uh, join us for the next episode. There are more great stories. I'm not sure how many will top this one, uh, <laughs> but uh, this is a, a great opportunity to share a terrific success and to celebrate that. And so thanks for being with us today, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Well, that's our episode for today. I hope you found this uh, interview as encouraging and inspiring as I did. And thanks again to Trish for sharing her comments and thoughts and being so open and, and honest and uh, really just pretty vulnerable about everything that happened. It really gives you reason to believe that you can do it too. So 
As we uh, wrap up for this week, uh, just to let you know, we'll be back. I'll be back from vacation and uh, looking forward to seeing all of you and talking about the results as they come in. A quick final reminder to sign up for the free live masterclass, How to Make the Next Bar Exam Your Last Bar Exam. That will be on Thursday, May 18th. You can sign up on our front page or on the page that this video is listed on. And we'll look forward to seeing you then. And until then, I'll look forward to seeing your name on the extra mile and the pass list. Bye for now.